Ivy Meyer's Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. We're on the web at ntnm.org. You can watch all our shows on YouTube, Community Policing Caps 24org Jewish Chicago will be out for your early voting pleasure. Uh, we've got early deadlines this time, uh, October 13th and 14th, and then we're going to finish things up. So uh, if you want to participate in Jewish Chicago, please make sure you contact me as early as possible. As all of you know, we love covering judicial races. It's one thing that doesn't get enough attention. A judge can affect your life much more than the most corrupt legislature or, or senator or whatever else um, affect every single area of your life. And it's important to have really good judges. And that's why it's important to pay attention. Now this year, actually, the Democrats aren't just running by themselves anymore. In the 12th Congress, in the 12th subcircuit, and I'll let my guests give you the boundaries, there are four Republicans running against four Democrats for four slots. Very unusual, but I think that makes for a very healthy government. I'd like to introduce you to one of those candidates, and that's Stephen Kozicki. How you doing? Thank you very much. Thank you for having me back. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. And why don't you tell us what the boundaries of the 12th uh, subcircuit are? Well, and, and, and by shorthand, I, I say it's like Arlington Park East to Lake Michigan, but it, it includes Mount Prospect and Des Plaines and Elk Grove Village and Glenview, um, Glencoe, Wilmette, Winnetka, um, uh, Prospect Heights, Wheeling. Uh, Arlington Heights, so uh, and most or all of those uh, governments. It's a pretty wide area, definitely. It is. It is. Oh, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a campaign there. Yes, yes, yes. It's we're we're uh, we're getting plenty of uh, walking in. So as a judge, you're not allowed to campaign like other uh, candidates do. Well, in, you know, I can't say I'm going to rule like this or rule like that on a particular case, but. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think our qualifications are, are fair, uh, fair uh, things to talk about and experience and uh, our basic philosophy of listening to cases and arguing cases and that sort of thing. So I think that that gives people enough information to make an intelligent decision. Oh, it definitely gives you a perspective. I mean, in doing all these interviews, too, there are some people I really like. And there's some people I want to throw through the window. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> I, I hope I'm one of the liked. <laughs> no, you're one of the liked. Don't worry about it. You got oh, nothing to worry you. about there. Why don't you tell? Uh, what, so you know what? It's a long time since you were on before the primary. Right. Um, tell us your qualifications and your background. Well, I, I've been an attorney for 30 years, coming up on 31 years, uh, and I actually have litigated cases for coming up on 33 because I started. Litigating cases when I was in law school, I was a, a, a 7-Eleven. It's uh, basically like an intern attorney, and uh, I had a great experience doing it. And I, I've tried four felony juries before I even got out of law school. It was mainly due an un, to an understaffing problem at the state's attorney's office. But uh, I've been litigating cases ever since then, um, a number of different types. I, I was a, a prosecutor, then I uh, was a public defender. And then I left the public defender's office. I was recruited away to do civil rights defense uh, oh. by uh, Judge and James in uh, Park Ridge. So in, in that um, iteration of my career, I represented some police officers in, in excessive force cases and civil rights cases and municipal governments and personal injury cases. So um, then I, uh, I left there after about eight years and opened up my own firm and I've had criminal defense experience since then. Very good. Yeah, so. it's definitely a wide-ranging background, no question right. about it. And um, in terms of your education? I'm um, uh, a, a, a graduate of Loyola University of Chicago Law School in 1985, Juris Doctor degree, and I uh, have a degree in accounting from Regis University in Denver, Colorado. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, it's like, how do I do that and wind up a criminal defense attorney? But I, I, um, I had a wonderful judge um, that was a professor of mine at Regis. And, you know, I just think about the amount of time that he would put into things. Uh, he was a judge in the Denver District Criminal Court, and then he could come to Regis at night to teach classes. That was a wonderful human being, but he was a good man. And I, I, um, he, he uh, talked me into doing an internship with him uh, after I uh, expressed reservations about being an accountant and uh, I, I, uh, was being recruited by a firm and one of the things that they wanted me to do was go to law school and learn tax law. 
and I thought, well, I, I like the idea of going to law school, but I'm not sure I like the idea of being a tax lawyer. Nothing personal in tax lawyers. I just, um, it, 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 it wasn't my passion. Um, no, and, it's something you've got to you feel for something if you're going to do yeah, it. You don't yeah. want to live a miserable life. Well, the, 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 the okay. great thing that, that Judge Plank did for me was he allowed me to sit in a courtroom, and I, I found my passion. And he was a good man, uh, a wonderful human being, and I thought, someday, maybe, I would love to be a judge like him. I mean, with his character. So I kind of, he kind of planted the seed a long, long time ago. And hopefully now it'll grow to fruition. Nice, very so. nice. No, that's really nice. You know, it's funny because the I, I originally we had been accepted to law school. He had good LSAT scores, wanted to go, and I was actually the for a while I was the token white guy on the Daily Defender. <laughs> I was covering the criminal court building at Twenty Sixth and Kiel. I had these visions of being E. G. Marshall and the Defenders. And doing these eloquent, brilliant defenses of innocent people, and then I see who the defendants are in criminal court building, and I went, ah! <laughs> I, I, I tell you, Avi, though, walking into those courtrooms with the thirty-foot ceilings, yeah, you know, with a briefcase in your hand and a and a, a, a very important case in your mind, it's really, uh, really a thrill. I mean, I, I still am thrilled by it. Well, see, I mean, that's great that you, you like it so much. I mean, I, I, do. I, I thank God that I'm in the field I'm in. I, I made the right choice, and you made the right choice. Well, thank you. I, I think so. It's, it's getting kind of late if I didn't. Uh, so No, it's, yeah. impo it's important to follow your passion. The fact is, even if it doesn't seem to make sense or be logical or whatever else, right. you know, you know if, you, if you keep your faith in yourself and what you want to do, um, you're going to wind up succeeding in life. Right. And I, I don't regret taking accounting. Uh, <laughs> I, I, it helps me run my business. It was an intellectual exercise like no other. Um, I, I look at what those poor accounting majors have to learn now. All the uh, computer and statistics and analytics and uh, you know all those things that didn't exist when I was in school. I didn't even think yeah. about that. Yeah. I, I think I'd be bored to death being an accountant. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a puzzle. It's it's. Uh, at least that's the way I looked at it when I was in school. I mean, I, it was, I had some wonderful professors, as I discussed before, but um, they had a passion about teaching it, and I had a passion about learning it. But when it came to doing it for eight, ten hours a day, I did it in, in an internship doing taxes, and I just, I was bored silly by it. And um, I, I thought, well, if, if I don't like it, I'm not going to be very good at it. So I, I, that's why I hunted for something else. Yeah, and thank God, you, you know, you're pretty obviously pretty good at this. Well, thank you. So anyway, let's talk about, you're, you're on the campaign trail. Right. Okay, first of all, you got a website? I do. It's stephenkozickiforjudge.com. Okay, and you see the name across the screen. It's spelled just like, it's Steve or Steven? Steven. Okay. Well, I, you know, everybody calls me Steve, but I, the, I know that, the website is Steven. I want to make sure when people yeah. Google you, they get right. the right name. And um, uh, about how many events do you attend during the course of, a, of an evening? Uh, sometimes three. That's pretty good. Yeah, uh, believe me, uh, after that I'm ready to, to flop. Um, so, and plus but, you're working in the meantime. Yes, it's like two <laughs> full-time jobs. Wow. It really is. It's tough. But, you know, you know I, my, my son, I, I, I got stung by a couple of wasps over the week, weekend and uh, in between events. And uh, he, he's a doctor, so I called him up for advice and uh, or texted him, and he said, "Give me my campaign slogan: Suck it up, sailor." <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a doctor in the Navy, so. <laughs> oh, really? Yes, he is. Very cool. Yeah, very so. cool. Well, in the meantime, we better wrap it up here. So I want to thank you very much, Stephen Kaziki, running as a Republican in one of four openings in the twelfth. Sub-Circuit of Cook County. We want to wish you good luck on the campaign trail and all the very best. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you having me again and you do such an important service. My pleasure. Thank you. All right.